Hi, my name is John Rinaldi. I'm with Real Time Automation. I'm called the Doctor of Industrial Networking because all we do here at Real Time Automation is industrial networking. Our entire team is focused entirely on all the application layer protocols for industrial and building automation, including everything from OzzyBus to ProfiBus device net to Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP, ProfiNet, LonWorks, BACnet, everything you can imagine. Today we're going to talk about Ethernet IP. The first thing, the very, and, and give, I'm going to give you the five things you have to know about Ethernet IP. First thing, Ethernet IP is simply an application layer of Stata going through a pipe. All right? There's some, Ethernet is a pipe. Ethernet IP is simply it organizes the data going through that pipe and delivers it in a fashion that the receiver and sender can agree, agree on. So that's all there is. Mapbus TCP, Profinet, DeviceNet, those are all la application layers that go over some kind of network and move data and organize data. When you work on your PC, there's a bunch of Microsoft uh, protocols that are going on that move data between your PC and, you, and your server. You don't see those, you don't know that they operate, but that's what's happened is because it, when you access a, a file on a server, there's a bunch of protocols involved there and you don't know about them. Same thing here. Ethernet IP is just an application layer uh, of data, organizing data going through a pipe. That's item number one. Item number two, data representation. This is the most important item when you're talking about uh, an industrial network or a building automation network. How is the data organized? In Modbus, in Modbus TCP, data is organized as 16-bit unsigned registers and bits and you can access it that way. In Ethernet IP, data is organized as an object. Every device looks like a collection of objects. Okay, and there's two kinds of objects in the device. There's required objects, that would be, say, these, these guys over here, and, and then I'm gonna just do a little, little classify them. We've got required objects, we've got application objects. Required objects, every device net, every device on Ethernet IP must have these required objects. One of them would be the connection object, another one would be its router object. There's a TCP object, there's an Ethernet IP object, there's an identity object. All of those things must be in every Ethernet IP device. So what's an object? An object is nothing more than a collection of common data. The identity object, for example, has a serial number, has the vendor ID, has all the date of manufacturer, also things like that. So it's a collection of common object, common data. The TCP object that has the TCP IP address, that has the gateway address, and things like that. Common stuff around TCP. All of these objects bring common data together. The data within these is called an attribute. So there's an attribute for the vendor ID, there's an attribute for the date of manufacture, and so on. There's four attributes in the TCP object for each of the octals for, of, a, of, a, of a TCP IP address. So you've got objects, instances, instances are, are the uh, common uh, duplication of these things. So if there were multiple Ethernet, if there were multiple Ethernet access point, you'd have two TCP objects with, uh, there would be instance one and instance two of those. Not a good example, I'll get into instances in a little bit. And then thirdly is an, a, is an attribute. So to, to access a, uh, a piece of data on Ethernet IP, you're going to access it by knowing the object number, the attribute number, and the instance number. Well, instance is second. So three things you need to know to get, it, to get data from the network into the device. So this, the device is the collection of all these objects, and each object is a collection of common data. So these are all the required, or these are some of the required objects, there's others. Now what are application objects? Application objects are the organization of the data that's specific to a particular kind of device. Let's say for example, and I love this example, I use it all the time, this is a flow meter. Okay, well, this is a flow meter then the flow meter has possibly a flow object, which has the rate of flow. It may have a temperature object because it measure, it's, it's collecting data about the temperature of whatever's going through the flow meter. It may have an input object 
because this, this flow meter, let's say, has 16 bits of input. And it could have an output object, which has 16 bits of output. So it's also an I.O. device in, in, instead of in, in addition to being a flow meter. Now, the instances, going back to the instances, since each one of these objects is an input point, we have multiple of them. So we have instance one is the first point, instance two is the second point, instance three is the third point. So instances are a way of, and they all have the same properties or attributes, so instances are a way of, of uh, duplicating, you know, organizing the same kind of data at, at one time. Now, uh, so, so this object representation, now this does not have anything to do with the implementation. Okay? It says nothing at all about implementation. It's simply how this data is organized, how it looks to from the network. All of this structure is defined in, the, in CIP, which is the Common Industrial Protocol. Common Industrial Protocol. And that is, that is put out by the ODBA owns that and owns this all, all of this. All of this, all of this organization is part of SIP. So this same organization is used in ControlNet, CompoNet, and DeviceNet, and Ethernet IP. So no matter what one of those four protocol application layers we're talking about, it uses this same organizational structure. SIP also defines the two kinds of messages that you find on a network like this. One message is, one is called explicit messages. Okay, explicit messages simply say you can open up the packet, look inside it, and it says, I want to read this object, this instance, and this attribute. So if an, an, an explicit message comes into this device, the router would route it and it's to read instance two, object one, which is the value of this input, um, attribute one, that tells, that then it knows exactly what data is refer, being referred to, and it can send that back in the response message, which looks kind of similar to that. I won't go into the details on that today. So explicit messages mean you can open it up and you can, you can, you can understand what it is, and uh, the, the response is very understandable, too. This is going to be like a, uh, uh, a byte that tells if the, it was successful or not, and, here, and the data is going to be included in that. That's the first kind of message. The second kind of message is called, even going to be called an implicit message. It's implicit because both sides have to understand what this collection of ones and zeros really is. All right? Now, and that's definable. That's definable by the, ve the vendor who created this stuff. And that, now, the, the data that's transferred in an implicit message comes from an assembly. And it's called an assembly because it assembles the data from these different devices. And that pack, that assembled data is what goes off into an, implicit, into an implicit message into some other uh, Ethernet IP device. And then data coming out into the device also goes into an assembly, and that assembly is then transferred out to these different devices. So you have input, you have implicit messages and explicit messages, and implicit everybody understand are just kind of understood between the two devices. This in this case, you have a client device that sends data, sends outputs into the device, and you have this is a server device which sends inputs back. A lot of people get confused between clients between clients and servers. Clients make connections to servers. Servers wait for a connection to a client. They have, a server has one connection to a client, and, and, a, and, has, and they, a client has connections to many servers. So that takes care of the five important things I wanted to tell you. Application layer, it's just an app, uh, Ethernet IP is an application layer, it's an object representation, it's, over, it's done by SIP, is the overall protocol, and you have two kinds of messages, and you have clients and servers. Thank you very much. Look forward to talking to us again. Come see us at rtaautomation.com.